Welcome back to Everything's Funny, 3 a.m. My name is Yogg. As you can see, we're playing a little bit more of the Regic Demon Toko, Chapter Zero, Prelude, Mercenaries. That's a battle tech reference, if anybody. Clan Ghost Bear, by the way. Anybody? No. No, no follow through to Kerensky? No. Not, nobody wants to uh, bring back the uh, inner spirit? Hmm? Nobody uh, join the Wardens or the Crusaders? Hmm? Nobody uh, fighting for the wolves or the uh, Jade Falcons? Hmm? Well, I just proved that I'm a wor like a, a really, really just sad nerdy guy in like seven different ways. <laughs> uh, like I haven't proved that already. Okay, so last time when we were playing Toko, uh, we found out that Toko not only knows somebody whose name is Tenchi, uh, spelled the way that you would assume Tenchi would be spelled, with an H, not a C, uh, and a uh, Dean message from her high school slash college, like bullshit college. No, it's not going to be that. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, shenanigans. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get this party started, shall we? Nutty hits down the down button on the wall. Hits the down button. Where? Where? You couldn't have shown me a damn thing on the background of it. <sighs> Salvador's newly built wing of the university. And yeah, bullshit, it's a university. And at this point, no students have ever been allowed inside. The hall seemed eerily quiet. That's weird. Oh, it's weird. I've never been to this part of the school. It's strange for the dean's office to be in the basement. Ha <laughs> ha, we're going to hell. The elevator pings and the door opens seconds later. The two of them step aboard. Although Toko looks around nervously, something feels off about this. The elevator jolts and begins going down, down, and seems to go on forever. Let me see this letter. It's weird. It's not really a conventional school document. Nutty reaches into her bag and pulls out the black envelope with the white text. At least it's not dark red on there. Along with a matching folded letter. And happily sets it in Toko's hands. You didn't think that the black letter seemed the slightest bit suspicious? The floor counter ticks down for 20 minutes. Wait, to, to minus 20? Minus 21, and then begins to rapidly skip stores. Minus 55, minus 100, and minus... 40, oh, minus 143. Uh, when it reaches minus 250. That's right, people. Hell is 250 f stories below us. That's how far. Plus one, plus two, plus three. Oh, it starts counting up. Never mind. My bad. Apparently, I was wrong. Suddenly, Toko's eyes widen at the paper, and her hands shrivel, uh, and her hands shriveling up and then dissolving into black dust. Her hackles raise. Because she has those, being a demon. Her heckles raises the air feels very different and uncomfortably familiar. I knew it. This is bad. This is really bad. We've crossed over into hell. Really? There's an elevator to hell in my school? No wonder everyone's scared of the dean's office. Hey, this is no time to joke. This is really bad. No wonder they asked for me to come along. Oh my. What seems to be going on here? I don't know. Hmm. Nadia seems unfazed by the whole thing, with a look that can only be considered a vague interest in seeing hell for the first time. Wait, what? She's, she's, is it because it's the elevator to hell? And she can see that, ele uh, that's weird. Don't worry, Toko. I'm sure that if they were trying to hurt you, they would have gone and have, they would have by now. Besides, you have Epiphany to protect you and me. <laughs> Of course! Of course, we have you to, to thank. Thank you. Ah, oh, what a country. I don't know why I went to Yakov Shmirnov, but I did. It happened. Let it go. Mm. Let's find out what happens here. Nadia latches her arm around Toko and leans in. This is comforting in an embarrassing sort of way as Nadia leans up against her and pushes her clo and pulls her close. Oh, damn. Do it. Do it in the elevator. Toko reaches out with her chest and warmly holds Biffany's strap. Yeah. The numbers on the floor count begin to rapidly slow. 1,968. 1,976. When it reaches 2,112. Ah! 2,112. 20, really? 2,112? Ah! <sighs> 
Why wouldn't they not be a Rush fan? I don't know. I guess that makes sense to me. The elevator pings and opens up again. Oh. Dropping the funk. Oh, the walls are painfully familiar black and marble. Are they? This guy glaring through the windows is unpleasantly unwelcoming me. Oh, an unpleasant welcoming red. An unpleasant welcoming red? Unpleasant welcome. Uh, unpleasant welcoming red. Hmm. As home has took over. As. Wait, what? As home as Toko feels at the moment. It makes her as unsettled as she could possibly be. Hmm. In the middle of the floor, the carpet leads through the painfully long office. What? Through a painfully long office? Is it really an office? Uh, to a desk at the far end. She can hear scribbling of signatures and the stamping of papers on the other side of the room. Of course, hell is a bureaucracy. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> Nadia looks through the windows, staring at the strange red cityscape before her. It looks like a human city, yet warped into impossible architectures. Non-Euclidean, perhaps strange and crazy geometries. Impossible architectures. Even to Toko, everything about it is always seemed off. Ha! Huh. I don't remember what your voice is supposed to be. Huh. I... Mm. No, no! Toko, don't keep me waiting! That voice. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's annoyingly familiar, is it? Toko runs towards the voice. Toko! Toko! Oh, yeah! You, you're suddenly the dean now? Suddenly? I've always been the dean of stu- I don't know, I'm not gonna do that. That would, that would be awful. Actually, now I, I kinda wanna do it now. <gasps> suddenly? I've always been the Dean of Students. Haven't you been paying attention? I can't very well step in the overworld anymore. So I had an elevator put into my office. Oh my god. <laughs> Nadia bounces along after Toko, trying to catch up with her as she had run off. Oop. <clears throat> Toko, don't run away like that. Jeez. You. It was all you, wasn't it? That's right. <laughs> Toko, don't ignore me. Toko takes a step back and looks at Nadi as she finally catches up. It becomes increasingly upset, her hand clinging to Epiphany and to the back of Nadia's sweater. And it was you. You're the one who told Gensha to follow us. Politrix uh, closes the black folder and places her hands upon the desk, linking her fingers together. She seems almost a croon, amused at the two. Mm, yes, that's right. And Devin, you opened a contract on Nadia's soul and told Devin to go after it. Yep, that was me. Paltrix doesn't move, only stays there watching and smiling. Toko's face, however, turns red and angry. Nadia clings to Toko's side reassuringly. Toko, calm down. And you orchestrated the entire mess to make me come back here, didn't you? Why? Why did you do it? Paltrix watches Nadia, then turns back to Toko. To awaken Epiphany, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could remember the original voice. I can't. Why do you think we've been giving you so many chances? Why do you think Limbo has kept your contract renewed year after year despite not bearing any souls? Daltrix lifts her hands and gestures to Epiphany. You don't think that we as demons couldn't tell what was going on with you, did you, Togo? It's incredibly unusual for such a situation to occur. For you to possess a complete human soul while the host continues leaving. This is exceptionally exciting moment. But you were always so stubborn. So headstrong. No one could get through to you. All we just all we needed was just a little push to send you in the right direction. Toko bends over. Oh yes. And slams her palms under the top of the desk. So you used me for your own stupid game. You kicked me out of hell and you introduced you to Nadia and Epiphany. Exactly. Toko recoils. She can feel her blood choking, cooking in her bones. Oh, my bad. I don't like being used. I don't like being bossed around and toyed with. You want to leave me. Uh, I want you to leave me and Nadia alone. Toko. Nadia clings to Toko tighter and looks on her face. Wait, what? And the look on her face 
is like she's in bliss. Beldrix curls her arms underneath her chest and muses of something. Wait, no, I want to see that. I want to see her curl her arms under... Come on. I wanna... Oh, damn it. <sighs> You're not going to curl the arms at all. Why do you tell me that when I... Mm, whatever. You and Nadia, huh? You've changed a lot, Toko. You've changed! Oh my! You've done it! you changed so much! It was crazy! Ah, oh, you had a... You had a clean cup. We had to move down. A lot from a mere three days in the overworld. You have so much potential as a demon. More than you will ever know. It'd be a shame if you wasted living in the overworld being hunted by demons and angels. What are you talking about? As a demon without instruments. You never participated in the inner circle, inter circle? Inter circle rock competition, have you? What are you getting at, Pelatrix? I mean, that now that you have epiphany, Peltrick stands up and throws her hands into the air and shakes them around like she just don't care. You can participate in this inter this year's intercircle rock competition, Hell on Earth Tour. Wow, it sounds like an amazing name. I wonder what kind of music demons like to listen to. I'm not interested. But Toko, it might be fun. Exactly, it is fun. And for the last 200 years, Outer Circle has never won a trophy in the Inner Circle World Competition. Wait. Wait! Outer Circle? Outer Circle. This is separated in 9 to 2. Uh, no, 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 no. That's... that's... no. No. This is a city, right? This is a city in the Seventh Circle. I, I don't really remember Dante that well, but... I don't know. I don't know if I can trust this lady. This is uh, with three tiers, three circles, and three tiers. Outer circle is limbo, dust, lust, and gluttony. Middle circle is wrath, envy, and greed. The end of circle is sloth, sorrow, and pride. Are you kidding me? Are you telling me the sloth kids are better than these guys? Hey, you guys! Way better rocking out. <laughs> And with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and hold it here until next time on Everything's Funny at 3 a.m. where we find out exactly why Pelotrix has done this. Hopefully I can remember her uh, her voice. I probably won't, I'm going to be honest, but uh, you never know. <laughs> See you next time.